The boobies also have a dramatic mating display, but that of the Galapagos albatross is even more complex and spectacular. At four or five years of age, the albatrosses return to the island Española to find a mate. These birds can live for 50 years and they mate for life, so the choice of a partner is a crucial time for them. Courting is governed by a very complex ritual that seems to combine dance steps with occasional fencing contests. Not only the young participate in courting, couples that did not manage to raise any young the year before join in this extraordinary dance, and the occasional bachelor bird dares to try to steal another's partner. After finding a mate, the albatrosses return to the same place year after year to reproduce and, as in the case of the boobies, lay their eggs on the ground. Incubation lasts for two months and both adults take turns. In Galapagos, there can be no room for error when caring for an egg. Albatross goes out to fish and leaves her vulnerable eggs for a few minutes. The egg is a source of food and water and the mockingbirds know it. Once the eggshell is broken, the larva lizards take advantage of the occasion. shell is also an irreplaceable source of calcium for them. However, in spite of the apparent tragedy, everything forms part of an overall balance. The mockingbirds have also hatched and their chick will benefit from the energy-filled albatross egg. In Galapagos, it is easy to see how each animal depends on the species that share its territory. But there is something common to all of these species which goes beyond the frontiers that mark each one of the islands. A life support system shared by all life in Galapagos, the sea. Under the waters that bathe the Galapagos archipelago, there are an infinite number of habitats brimming over with life. Unlike the islands, these are open systems and many species pass from one to the other without encountering any physical obstacles. The 
This natural wealth is due to the particular conditions of the Pacific Ocean in the Galapagos area, where the trade winds and the ocean currents combine to create an annual cycle with slight variations. Cold waters arrive in the Peru current from the south, the Cromwell Equatorial current from the west, and the Panama current from the north with warmer waters. The first penguins must have arrived by sea from the frozen waters of Argentina and Chile. The Galapagos penguins descended from those penguins of Humboldt and Magellan. This is the only one of the 18 species of penguins that appears north of the equator and nests only in the tropics. of the cold waters of Galapagos was the key to the origin and survival of this penguin. The icy waters from the south provided the microscopic nutrients and the rest of the trophic chain came after them. A chain of life that ends up outside the water. Sea lions are the most common mammals in the Galapagos Islands. The floating islands that brought the reptiles hardly transported any mammals. There was no water available, so the two weeks that it would take for a raft to drift from the continent to these islands was too long for most mammals to survive. But the sea lions did not come in rafts, they swam. Thousand sea lions live in the archipelago area and live mainly on fish, an almost insignificant effort for the rich waters that prosper from the coming together of different currents. There are two species in the Galapagos. One, the fur seal, came with the cold waters of the south, the same waters that brought the penguin. It is the smaller of the two and is related to the fur seals that still inhabit the waters and coasts of Argentina and Chile. But its close relative, the Galapagos sea lion, is more numerous. The first members of this species must have come from the northern hemisphere, from the coastal waters of California. And in keeping with their origins, it is not uncommon to find them enjoying a day surfing.
sea iguanas depend on the sea for survival, just like the sea lions. First thing in the morning, they gather in large groups near the water, letting the sun warm their bodies and activate their ecothermic metabolism. When their temperature has risen sufficiently, the sea iguanas go to the breaker areas or the intertidal area in search of the algae on which they feed. These are the only iguanas in the world that go into the sea. Their life depends entirely on the supply of algae that the ocean offers them, so they have become excellent swimmers. The sea iguanas feed on the algae on the shores while they can. But if these start to run out, they enter the water and dive down to the bottom of the sea, propelled by the powerful muscles in their flat tails. But this is only the beginning of their amazing adaptive achievements. A metabolism that is capable of working without renewing the oxygen supply and the ability to reduce their heart rate at will allow these sea iguanas to immerse themselves at depths of up to 12 meters for at least an hour. On many occasions, the most succulent, leafy algae are to be found in the breaker area. This is a considerable obstacle for young iguanas, but adult iguanas in the prime of life have no great trouble in reaching them. Sharp claws capable of withstanding the beating of the waves manage to keep them between the breakers and let them reach the algae successfully.